Okay, hi everybody. Uh, this is uh, Dr. Rob Kirkland. Uh, it's uh, Wednesday, February 22nd, and uh, I'm proud to introduce today uh, Dr. Dean Golako, who will be giving a talk today on changing the world in which we live. Um, short uh, bio on uh, Dean. Um, Dr. Golako is the uh, is CSU Global's program coordinator for undergraduate and graduate level human resources for the last five years and has taught such topics as employee and labor relations, employment law, and compensation leadership and organizational behavior, and finance for business. A veteran of the public sector, he currently serves as library director for the city of Lodi, California, overseeing a multi-billion, a multi-million dollar <laughs> library and community foundation. He has also served on Lodi's human resources management as the human resources and organizational development manager at the University of California, Davis, and as the personnel director for the city of Woodlands, California. Uh, Dr. Galaco, it's really great to have you uh, here today and uh, we really look forward to your presentation. Perfect, here we go. So we have about 25 minutes and then we have some questions. We go for about a half hour, so it's 11.02. So bear with me, I'm gonna scare, uh, uh, share my screen, so hang on. Let me just make sure that everybody's got that. Yeah, Dean, we can see it. We're good. Okay, you're good. We're going to get started then. So I don't go too fast, but I certainly want to finish. We have about 22 slides. It's certainly great to be here with everybody today. And so I'm going to go through these slides and I'm going to talk about some things on the slides, some things I don't, but I want to hit the major parts. Of course, if you have any questions, just ask me. It's much more important that we answer your questions and I go through my slides, but I'll make sure that I get everything in within the next 25 minutes or slow. so. So here we go, how to change the future. There's a couple of words that we want to talk about today, but I want to start with this saying, we're only limited by the dreams of a better world and the determination to make a difference. That's a statement I came up with a couple of years ago. I'll say it again, because it's really important. We're only limited by the dream of a better world and the determination to make a difference. There's another, another way to say it, which is about that, uh, that change has to do with dreams and determination. There's five words that we're gonna hit upon throughout this day. It starts with assess, adapt, it goes into control, and then these words, dreams and determination. So I wanna spend a minute or two talking about this. Change is about doing something different. We'll see in the next slide that change has to do with quite a bit about anything that we do in our life. This morning, I was out of shaving cream, so I ran to the store, to Walgreens, and got some shaving cream, and they had this new, uh, actually cream instead of foam, and I thought, I'm gonna try this new cream. It was awesome. That's a great example of what change is. Change is about doing something different. In some ways, this benefited me, and we're going to talk about that a little bit longer uh, in about five, ten minutes. But assess and adapt deals with, you have to assess the world that we have today, and you have to adapt. Adapt is, again, one of the more uh, interesting words dealing with change, and it really means that there's very little that we can, the third word, world, third word control in our world, but we have to adapt to our world. And it starts with assessing where your world is, adapting to the realities of the day, and then trying to have some control over our future. I use the word some control intentionally because you can't, you can't control everything. But we want to have as much control in our lives, but in an era of dramatically escalating transformational change, it becomes almost impossible to change everything. But we do try to control as much as we can. And it goes back to these two really more ethereal words of dreams and determinations. I hope everybody realizes that they have a dream, but dreams don't count unless you do something about them. And that comes from determination. So throughout the, the next 20, 25 minutes, we're really gonna go through these words of assessing and adapting to the world in which we live, trying to control as much as we can, and realizing that if we want to achieve our dreams, we have to have the determination to do so. So we see a world that is quite challenging. And probably, I guess every generation says this, but I can't imagine a time when there's been as much of a transformational change as what we're seeing today. Even during the depression and the war, that was certainly a transformational age. Maybe this is similar to it, but as far as the political <coughs> and economic world in which we see, it is much different. Hang on for a second. 
I'm going to mute a couple people because I hear, I think I heard Sue. Sorry about that. Um, there's probably not been a more transformational age than today. If you look throughout history, what you'll see is that change has always been a part of life, life from the invention of the wheel to the cart. And then you go centuries later and you have from the horse and buggy and then you have uh, even the car, the train, the car, and then the airplane. What we've seen is that in between these really transformational changes, you had 10, 20, 30 years to adapt to that change. Remember that word, adapt. Now what we're seeing is change comes so much dramatically and repeatedly that people haven't had a time to adjust to the change of today. Even if you just look at online education, how quickly that has changed. 10, 15 years ago, it really was a for-profit world. Now we see that it's becoming much more of a nonprofit world and the for-profits are struggling. Who would have imagined, I got into online education just when it started, who would have imagined 15 years ago that you would have some of the premier colleges in the nation entering into this world because it really is the future of education. That's how quickly things have changed. But you can see from this slide that we're really into an escalating area of change from our financial systems to jobs that must be created and found. I was reading today that Mark Cuban, who owns the Dallas Mavericks and owned a couple internet businesses, was talking about how jobs in the future are becoming much more scarce, that they're just not going to be created. Technology has really taken over so many parts of our world that it's becoming impossible to create a job that's going to last. Going back to that adapting and assessing, what he's saying is you have to assess the future you have to adapt to the reality of it, of it today. You can see the environment has to be repaired, diseases, famine, political structures. It really is quite a changing world. And it brings us to, in this era of a changing world, we have to be somewhat the catalyst to change. Again, another word of that five is control. We have to have much more control of our future. What we're saying here on this slide is those most disadvantaged by change have abdicated their responsibility to choose their own path and determine their own fate. When we see people who are having struggles or challenges, we have to look back and say, where did those challenges or struggles, struggles occur? Often it's because they haven't taken the needed control of their life. They become more of a victim rather than a victor. And what we see is that in change, you have to be much more aggressive. You have to be much more proactive. You have to be a step ahead of what that change is. Remember those words, assess and adapt. They're not necessarily victims of change. They're victims of choices that they may have made or circumstances that they can't control. And as a result, you become much more susceptible of a future that you can't control. Again, control is such a key word in what we're dealing with today. But we need to change. And as this, oops, sorry, I'm going too fast. As this slide talks about, we need to change for a number of reasons. There's really four primary reasons why change occurs. And you can see it here on this slide. Hopefully I'm not going too fast. If I am, just drop me a note. So we change for one of four, here's two. One is that something doesn't work. That's pretty easy. You're gonna to have to get a new car if your car breaks down. These are changes that don't cause great consternation or even great stress in our life. They're changes that really has to happen. Something that can work better. So something works, but it could be working better. There's always something that can be improved. Again, going back to online education and just to education in general, we are entering into an era where even though your enrollments are growing and the faculty are happy, you're still trying to figure out something to change to make it better. That's where this aspect of something better could work. I bring up the, the, the example here of Diet Coke. Diet Coke has worked out real well, and I believe it was the number one Diet Coke soda. But what they found is that many men weren't drinking Diet Coke because they didn't want to drink something that had the word diet in it. So they actually came up with Coke Zero. Coke Zero and Diet Coke are very similar, but by having the name Zero, they figured that they can expand the market into uh, to men. Another aspect of that, you see Pepsi Max or some of these other words that they're using to not use the word diet. It's just really interesting about how they're constantly wanting to make a better product or a different product. Just Diet Coke or Coke or Pepsi have all come out with lemon Coke or cherry Coke. 
And it's all about trying to expand the market to make it differently. So something could work better. Two other reasons. Something doesn't exist. This is where you actually create a market. The best example is from trains to cars or typewriters to computers. You create something that hasn't existed. And that is, in some ways, a more fundamental change. And when you move from, for instance, radio to film, I often watch old films or I watch videos or movies about uh, the silent screen era stars, uh, like um, the Gibsons and, um, and Mary Pickford. And they were very popular in the 1920s, but as talkies, as they used to call them, in other words, films came in with uh, words, some of these people could not transition and they lost their market. So you can see where something doesn't exist and where you create something, all of a sudden what you can do is people can in mass lose their whole market. It really can be, again, this transformational fundamental change. And the last is just something different, where you just think that something needs to be uh, uh, something different than what you have. This aspect of change can be often the most difficult because you could have a product or a person that works, things are going well, but you figure that you need to change something just to make it different. This is where sometimes some of the stress comes in with change because you just want to make it a little bit differently. But in general, remember we talk about our words again about adept, assessing and adapting. Here is where we use that word assess. In our world, we have to make something unique, something novel, something different. What works, what sells, what allows you to keep your job, whatever your job is, is because you offer something that nobody else does. Something unique and something novel. And that is such a key in change management. It's such a, it's such a key in trying to make yourself employable in the future, valuable to the people that you need to be valuable to. But you have to offer something that no one else does. That brings us to our third word, which is control. Control about your future comes from having something unique or no novel. People want something that nobody else has. If you can figure out what that is and you can offer it, you can give yourself great security. As some of you know, I do quite a bit of uh, conversations with students in, rel in relation to career services. And we talk about you've got to have that aspect. In business, we call it a competitive advantage or competitive edge. You've got to have that something extra, something different, something unique that people will pay you for. In human resources, we call it compensable. It has to be something that people are going to pay for. And that's what's really key. So those are the four reasons that we change. So hopefully you have a concept and an idea of how our world is changing so quickly. What are the four reasons that we need to change? And it brings us to, do, to this slide, which talks about what we know about change. We talked about the five words. This is what we know about change. Those five words help us understand this, is that change is a natural part of life. There is an insatiable quest to think, be, and act differently. Everybody you meet, just about everybody, I hate generalizations, but just about everybody you meet wants to be different, wants to be seen as different. So change is a natural part of life. And probably the second bullet here may be the most important. Change viewed as advantageous is almost always welcome. Those people that you meet that say, I don't like change, I want things to stay the same, I always turn around and say, do you wanna make more money this year than you did next year? Do you wanna live in a bigger house? Do you want a new car? Do you want new clothes? Almost everyone will say, well, yeah, of course I want that. So change that's viewed as advantageous is welcome. Maybe if there's one thing you remember from this presentation more than anything else is, if you can make sure or you can try to allow change to be viewed as advantageous to others, to the person that you're trying to change, if you can show how that change is gonna benefit that person, change is almost always gonna be viewed as advantageous. That is such a key in relation into change management, changing the world, changing your own future, changing other people's future, is that try to figure out a way that you can make it advantageous to someone else. If you tell someone, we want you to change because it's going to make the organization better, you're not going to get the buy-in that you should. But if you tell them, 
If you make these changes, it will make you a more competent employee, a more valuable employee, and that may translate into more money. The end day, they will be much more receptive to the change that you're trying to promote. Third, change favors those who adapt. We know that, we saw that from our second slide. If you can adapt to the future, change is going to be something that you're gonna benefit from. A different future, as I say here, is inevitable. There was this saying, and I hope I paraphrase it correctly, something to the effect of um, refusing to change is like holding your breath. Uh, yeah, you may be successful at it, but you die. And that's an interesting statement in a way. Four, I was, we've seen from the last slide, change favors those who think differently. If you think differently, remember the slide talked about being unique, almost as competitive advantage, competitive edge. If you choose to do something differently, you have a great chance of benefiting from change. And remember this, for those who have computers, and everyone, almost everyone does, computers, the information we gain from computers is often only as good as the information that we put into the computer, which means we have to think about what to put into a computer. As an example, for those who build classes, if you build a class, you certainly have to have the content put in there. There's great software that may, be, that may showcase that content differently, but it's, same, it's the same content that you put in there. But if you can figure out a way to think of innovative and creative content to go in, you may also get creative content that goes out. The person who thinks that way is gonna make a tremendous amount of money. Change favors those who think differently, who have a natural curiosity of the world, the explorers and inventors. Isn't it interesting when you look back in history, that it's the explorers and inventors we often remember most. Those people like Lewis and Clark for centuries have risen to the forefront of, of great people of their age because they are the explorers and the inventors. That's what we have to become. And again, you'll see this word on number five about control. Change is inevitable, but failure is not. So change is inevitable. Change will happen. But our ability to profit from change can be a certainty if we follow, if we know what change is, and if we realize that we need to assess, adapt, control, have that dream and have that determination. Okay, the last part of the presentation, and we're doing really good on slides and time, so that's really good. Hopefully, I'm not going too fast, but I'm trying to keep it to a half hour. By the way, if anybody wants this presentation, I can certainly email it out to you, so just let me know. I'm not sure if actually it gets, it gets um, sent out or not, but I can send it to you for sure. How we can change our future. There's five things that we need to do, five aspects that we need to concentrate on to make sure that we can change the future or change our future. Either works. And they're called dreams, determination, chance, confidence, and also what I call them make. DDCCB, that's how I remember it. So dreams. You have to have the right dreams, dreams that are right and just, the good dreams. Then you have to have the determination to make the painful sacrifices and tough decisions. You have to have a chance. You have to have that chance to make a difference. I'll talk a little bit more about that. You have to have some confidence, confidence in your direction and your outcome. My dad has always said, if you don't have confidence in yourself, how can you expect other people to have confidence in yourself? It's one of the great lines he's ever said, in my opinion. And lastly, make. You have to have the, the ability and the desire to make a difference in some small way. So. Let's talk about each one of these dreams, dreams that are right and just. If you look at, remember we talked about these inventors and these creators, explorers, they had this dream. And those people who change the world often have this dreams. They're the beacons that illuminate your future. Change often starts with the dream, but it does not end with hope. I love that. Change starts with, dream, with a dream, but does not end with hope something needs to be done about it. It ends through hard work and resolute determination. I have this plaque that I created that I gave out um, in the winter holidays to uh, quite a few people that says you need to work hard, be likable, and overcome your obstacles. Work hard, be likable, and overcome your obstacles. It doesn't say on their hope for the future. You have to actually do something about it, which brings us to the second slide. Most are taught to go along and get along. Believe it or not, in today's world, that's not going to get you ahead because what gets you ahead is, remember the slides earlier, 
about those people who have that unique uniqueness. They have that competitive edge or advantage. That's something different than other people don't. Remember at the beginning of the slide, I talked about how important it is to really have something that no one else does. This is what we're talking about here. You have to have the determination to have the right dream, but the determination to make it come true. It says in here, talking about the willingness to defy the odds, stand alone against the masses, invite scorn, risk failure. They're all attributes of the very few that actually make something different in life. Those are the few that actually do change the world. I have long believed that determination is the singular common trait that defines the mythical leaders of our history. When you look back at those people who truly have made a tremendous difference, it doesn't have to be in a country, it doesn't have to be in the world, it can be in their own town, even their own family. Those people who have made a tremendous difference are those that have determination to overcome whatever odds that you'll see within your future. I also have this saying that says, talent will get you in the top 100, Hard work will get you in the top 10, but guts will get you to the top. So it's great that you have talent. It's even great that you work hard because working hard is important, but you gotta have the guts. Here is where determination comes in. When you look at those people, just about, pick, just about anybody who's made some kind of significant change in their world, you'll see more often than not that they did have the right dream, but they have the determination to make it come true. And dreams without determination is really just going for a walk. So, on to the third one. Uh, I've talked about dreams may be worthwhile, but they're worthless unless you can achieve them. And I like that. I like that a lot. Chance. Some have had great trust put on them, like Golda Meir, Winston Churchill, and President Bush. Others have had great change thrust on them, like Margaret Thatcher and Nelson Mandela. In other words, they were in a position and, all, and a big change came up. Nelson, uh, Margaret Thatcher had a war, and of course, Nelson Mandela was in prison for many years. But you have to have the chance to make a difference. I've talked quite a bit about uh, the ability to have a job, which is great, but you have to work for somebody who allows you to do something different. And that's much different. You can be in a position where your supervisor doesn't allow you to make the kinds of changes that you need to make. You could really have that dream and that determination but you're never gonna have the chance. And when you have change, you actually have to have a chance. There's been people who have had a great idea for a business, but they happened to open up a business during a recession, or they started a business and a recession occurred. They had the right idea, they had that work ethic, they had the guts, but timing wasn't in their favor. At some point though, the time comes and the change presents itself. That's when the battle's waged. Hopefully you have the fortitude to stick it out, to stay the course, even when timing may not be within your favor. There's people who've had a great ambition to do great things, but at the time that they actually wanna embark on that change, health, financial, family issues arise, and you, you don't have the ability to actually see it through. So to have great change, you actually have to have a chance. Confidence. I talked about confidence, and I talked about what my dad said, but confidence is that utter belief in who you are, what you stand for, and where you're going. It is that what I call certainty of purpose, and it's also an unwavering faith that you know and you can do better. Confidence is a great attraction to other people. If you're embarking on a change, which inherently means you're going into a future that others have not ventured, you have to have this confidence that you're right that unwavering belief that you know the direction. And not only do you know the direction, you can achieve the direction that you're going to. Confidence is absolutely a key component in being able to change your future or the future. And lastly, to make a difference. I often think that too many spend, you know, either more than what they say, they use more than what they make, they take more than they give. They've made a life, but they've not made a difference. And I think as we age, we often see that people become a little bit more regretful of the time that they've used because they haven't used their time wisely. 
or use their time of, to do something of significance. And here's what I mean. Remember we talked about the five aspects of change. We talked about the dreams and determinations and, and we talked about that you have to have a chance and you have to have confidence. But you also have to be directed towards something that I call a noble and honorable and decent aims. When you're changing something, which means you're making something different, in order to include people in that change, in order to get help and assistance, it has to be something that's valuable. It has to be something that other people see, yes, I want to be a part of that change. That's something that I want to do. I want to be known for helping that. And here in our college, we really do great things. And I think most of us, if not all of us, want to be a part of this adventure because we really feel like what we're doing is a decent, honorable, and noble ambition. Whether it's outside of this school and you want to teach others to read or save the environment or shelter the homeless or feed the hungry or help the disabled walk or cure the sick, those are all noble ambitions. And if you can create a change that has this in mind, that is going to raise our future, that's going to better tomorrow, then you will have an ability to have a change that's going to be lasting. And that's really going to be the word I'm going to use again is transformational. I have this saying that says, in the dawn of life, we strive to make a living. And excuse, oh, I have this wrong. In the twilight, in the dawn of life, we strive to make a living. In the twilight of life, we strive to make a difference. Sorry about that. I have a word off. But what that means is when we're younger, we just really want to make a living. When we're older, we really want to make a difference. And when we talk about change, it is interesting that as we get through our middle years or even later years, it, is, it becomes even more prominent that we do something of significance, that we do want to embark upon a change that we feel is going to benefit not only ourselves, but others as well. And so we almost made it to uh, 30 minutes, which is pretty good, which allows for a lot of questions. I certainly don't want to take up a lot of your time. The key words again is assess, adapt, control, dreams, and determination. I love these words. It talks about what change is about today, that we have to assess the present, assess the future. We have to adapt to a different reality. We have to realize, recognize, appreciate, and certainly embrace that today and tomorrow are going to be different. And we have to make sure that we adapt to that change in reality. We have to understand that we need to make ourselves as profitable, valuable, and important as possible so we can control as much of the future as we can. If, even if you just look at online education, how it's changing, it's affecting all of us that are listening to this presentation. If you look at education itself, it's, it's changing everybody and affecting everybody that's in education today. We have to be the person that has as much knowledge and ambition to help move that change forward. That's the only way. The more control we have about our future, the better chance we have of profiting from it. And of course, dreams and determination. The last slide I want to talk to you is, is that in a world that demands monumental change, we are limited only by the dreams of a better world and the determination to make a difference. This is a slide that we had towards the beginning. If we can do that, if we're going to dream of a better world and be determined to achieve it, then our life on earth will have made a difference, which is the eternal ambition and crowning achievement of a decent and honorable life. So dream of a better world, be determined to achieve that better world. If we can do that, we will have made a difference. And as we look back, we'll say, good job. We have achieved everything that we wanted to achieve in life. And that, that making a difference, which is what we can do, we have a control to do that, is something that as we look back, we'll have great pride in our, our present and also great hope in our future because we'll know if we can do it, just about anybody can. All right, everyone, I am absolutely open and welcome any questions or just comments or additions that anybody has on anything that we talked about. And I'm gonna stop the share just so everybody knows. Okay, everyone, uh, go ahead and uh, uh, ask your questions of uh, our presenter here today. Anybody at all. It's okay if you don't. Dean, this is Tony. Hi, Tony. 
How are you? Good, thank you for asking. So one thing that, that I wish you'd elaborate on a little bit more is, is that switch, that how do you get people to kind of look at, you know, sort of dynamic change as a positive, you know, and not something that they're really going to be afraid of. Because change means work, you know, change means, you know, new things, uh, things you have to get used to. And, and, and you're right, it's, it's a period of growth, it's a period of new experiences, but how do you get them to make that shift mentally? That's a great question. And I'm going to go back to a slide um, because I just think this slide is so important. Um, did, I don't think I did. Do you guys see this slide? No? Yep. That one? Uh, yep. The second one is the most important thing. I think if, if to get anybody, and this goes back to this slide, which is what we know about change. I would copy this. If I was trying to convince anybody why change is important, and in some ways, here's the deal. If people aren't going to change, they're going to be left behind. That's, there's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. If you're refusing to change, you will, have, you will lose control over your future, and you will become dependent on the change that other people create. What I've learned most about change is that. You can either try to control the change, control your future, or you abdicate responsibility and let other people create a future that you may not profit from. And that's one of the first slides I talked about. But I always talk about this second bullet is, is maybe the most important about how to get other people to change. If you can figure out a way that change can be viewed as advantageous to other people, they will welcome change. Because as I mentioned, uh, you know, I just got a new car this year. I love my new car. I don't want to have a 15 year old car. Nothing wrong with that, but I love this new car. I've worked in HR for 20 years. I can't tell you how many people have come to me, dozens and dozens. You know, this job is changing. This is not the job that I changed, that, that I signed up for. Okay, great. Well, you know what? we'd be happy to give you the job that you signed up for. Oh, that's awesome. I really like that job. That's the one I want. Okay, well, I'm also gonna give you the pay when you signed up for, and the benefits when you signed up for, and the retirement when you signed up for, and the office when you signed up for. Everything's gonna be the same. What? You know, that's 60% less than when I started 20 years ago. Well, if you want everything the same, there you have it. I'm being a bit facetious, but the point is, People love change that benefits them. And if you can figure out a way that change can benefit them, they're gonna be more advantageous. For those that are not accepting of change, in some ways, Tony, there's not much that we can do. If we, we can tell them that change is a natural part of life, everything changes. Every aspect of our life changes. The greatest change mechanism in our culture today is medicine. There's not a person alive that I know of that once, when they're having surgery, wants to have the surgery as it was done in 1930. They love the new uh, anesthesia, anesthesia is to put you out and the lasers that are less invasive. That is a change in our world that I don't know of many people when they go to the doctor is gonna say, no, 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 I don't want penicillin. What did they use in the 1920s? Because I don't like change. No, nope, doesn't happen. Change is a natural part of life. Number two is that it's advantageous. And three, we have to convince people that a different future is inevitable. And if you are not accepting of a different world, then you will have, I don't want to say no place, but you will have little place in that future. And it, it favors those who think differently. If you choose not to think differently, that's fine as well. But the future doesn't have a place for you if you can't think differently. If you don't have this natural curiosity about how to always make something different, you will have a very limited future. And then lastly, as we go back, very similar to three is five, which is you, it, you want to have some control in your future. Because if you can have control in your future, you can often profit from your future. Future Profit just doesn't mean money. Profit means having a secure job, secure friends, having 
some kind of stability. All of that comes from control. But to go back specifically to your question, Tony, again, number two is the one that I often, I mean, that is the one that I try. Anytime that I create something, make something different, I always try to see it from somebody else's viewpoint. Like, how am I going to get them to make this change, to support this change? It has to be viewed as advantageous to them. I'll give you an example. In my workplace, we're going to have to be cutting hours. Some people don't want to cut hours. Some people want in seniority systems so that they have all of, uh, you know, that they have the hours and other people get less. They don't want it fair across the board. They, again, in a seniority system, they want it because they've been there longer. And I tell them, if we do it that way, these duties that you aren't doing are now going to be yours. Those are duties that people who are newer have to do, and they're, they're less favorable duties. Not only are you gonna have to be doing those duties, your hours are gonna be different. You're gonna have to be working nights and weekends. And so when I start showcasing all of the disadvantages of that, they start to realize, well, you know, it's, it's more disadvantageous not to do it the way Dean wants to do it, as opposed to the way that I think I would like it. So you have to create, you have to sell your vision of a changed future to people in a way that they see that they're going to benefit from it. I hope that happens, but this is a really good slide, not just because I created it, but this is a really good slide about why, you know, we should get people to change. Thank you, Dean. Hopefully it helps. It does. Good. Uh, I actually have this one in my office, by the way. Okay. Uh, anything else that I can answer for anybody? Thanks yeah. for the question. Yeah. Hey, Dean. Uh you may want, uh, you have a very, very interesting website uh, that you've put together. Maybe you can tell everybody about that for a couple of minutes because I think it would point them to additional resources. Yeah, sure. Um, you know, I usually, I wouldn't have said anything if you didn't say that, but um, you know, I certainly don't want to promote anything. But I do have a website, it's my name, deanbwalker.com, and I have um, all kinds of quotations on there, all kinds of videos. I think there's probably a hundred or 75 on there. There's probably 400 on YouTube. Um, so I'm really into quotes and, and it's most of you guys know, and I've, I've written some books. And so I'm really into that. Um, and so you're welcome to go there if, if you would like, it's uh, kind of a neat web page that I put together and my son did it actually. I have to give him credit for it. But anyway, if you want to do that, that'd be great. Any other questions be happy to address with you. Hi, Dean. Tony here. Hey, Tony. I have a question for you. Um, you yes. did mention that, um, and I'm, I've, I've uh, studied behaviors before, so I know 70% of us don't like change. So getting that kick in the butt or that motivation will help a lot. But you also mentioned faculty roles, and I know at CSU Global, we have quite a different environment here. Have you had to, or can you give us an example of how uh, motivating change can impact faculty? Yeah, so one comment I, I like to make is that, that statistic, the 70% of people don't like change. I always like to kind of turn around um, and say 70% of people don't like change that doesn't benefit them because my statistic is 100% of people like change that benefits them. In my history of HR, I've never, ever had somebody say, no, 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 I don't want to raise, I don't like change. Never. Uh, no, 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 I don't want a better retirement, I don't like change. It's never happened. Almost always people uh, avoid change or don't like change when it doesn't benefit them. And that's where that number two comes about, change viewed as advantageous is welcome. I hate to use always welcome, um, but if you can make it advantageous. And so you talk about motivation with faculty. Interesting question. The answer uh, I'm gonna give is a little bit different. Well, first of all, um, you have to start with the right person. Absolutely, positively the right person. Um, it is almost impossible to hire a person and motivate them to succeed if they don't want to succeed. 
we know what for those who've studied motivation we know that motivation is an internal response it's an internal mechanism you could never motivate somebody else those people who say they're a master motivator no what we can do is we can offer something to somebody that motivates them example i often give is let's say you're a salesperson and they want to increase sales and they come up and say you know if you if your sales reach x we will give you a rolex watch well i don't care about a rolex watch i i'm not going to motivate myself and work long hours for a watch that i don't want but if you said if you reach these sales you get one of six gifts and one of the gifts they already know is something that i want then i am going to be motivated to do that and so with motivation which the strong correlation with motivation is communication what we have to do is we have to communicate with our faculty we have to communicate with other people to find out what is it that i can give you that will motivate you to do your job to excel at your job and whether it is more classes or fewer classes or different classes are a higher position or more pay are just to be recognized more or just to get an award whatever it is that somebody wants we as faculty have to figure out what that is and then try to give it to that faculty that's what makes us a good motivator and i think we're moving in that realm at csu global one of the great things about what we do is we offer so many avenues for faculty to participate if they so choose to and by participate i also mean to make more money if you want to write a course evaluate a course if you want to grade a test, if you want to grade a PLA, which is a portfolio, if you want to be a lead faculty or a PC, I mean, the opportunities are almost endless as far as if you want to be engaged, there's many ways to do it. So we have to figure out what will motivate a particular faculty. And I know what motivates some of the faculty that I work with. And I try as you know, a lead faculty person to try to give them what will motivate them. But that's the key in relation to motivation. For those who refuse to change, um, remember I talked about you have to be the right person, you have to hire the right faculty. I would guess, and I'm guessing, I would guess that most people who teach online embrace change because it's a changing technology, it's a changing profession. I mean, just if you look in the last couple of months, for those teaching in graduate realm, we have to put videos out now. That's a change from two years ago. I'm not saying we weren't doing it before, but that's a change. So I think by nature, we're a changing, changing environment, much more changing than your typical uh, brick and mortar college, which is why we have online education. But the future is moving to this technology. I don't know how many of you were on a call yesterday. We were looking at new technology. We're looking at new technology in the next couple of days, almost weekly at least weekly i think we have a presentation on new technology and whether it's going to work for csu global so i think that by nature we don't have to worry too much about the change aspect of our faculty because we are changing um, and it's a changing industry but what we have to figure out is how to hire the right person because if you hire the right person and put them in the right environment you'll be fine one other thing when you look at success employee success it comes from three characteristics um, it comes from um their ability their motivation and their environment do they have the ability to do the job second are they motivated to do the job and third are they in the right environment do they have the right supervisor the right technology the right courses that kind of thing and ability is kind of a yes or no right and to environment we can control what we can't control is that second aspect motivation if somebody isn't motivated to work here and to excel here there's really not a lot that we can do. We can control, we can help them with their ability, we can help them with the environment, but if they truly don't wanna excel and put in the work, and they, you know, teaching is about caring about your students and having a passion for your profession and, be, and, and wanting to have fun in what you do. That's what teaching is about. If we can't find a person who does that, there's not much we can do. Thanks, Tony.
Hey, uh, Dean, I might mention uh, to you some of the, when I was looking at your presentation, we have some great courses at CSU Global that uh, talk about some of the uh, areas that you're discussing, particularly in our management and organization uh, fields. For example, Management 351, uh, Intro to Organizations and Change, Management 475, Strategic Innovation, and Org courses, Org 100, um, uh, navigating organization and change org 304 of leading authentically and uh, a master's course org 505 organizational change so we have a number of courses at csu global both at the graduate and undergraduate level that uh kind of address some of the issues you brought up today yeah yeah we do very just, just as a plug <laughs> CSU Global? It's very, well, you know, our world is changing considerably. And uh, we had a slide that talks about that. And probably no more considerably than in jobs. Um, we're looking at a, a jobless society in the next five to 15 years. Um, you know, there's an, a quick example. In California, you know, the minimum wage has continued to increase. It's going up to $15 in another year or two or somewhere around there. Um, and it's now unprofitable to have so many workers in fast food. I was in Canada last year and they had kiosks to order your food at McDonald's. Those are now coming throughout California and people are bemoaning the loss of a job, but it's too expensive to pay a worker and the work can be done by a kiosk as far as ordering your food. It's no different than going to an ATM. And so that is continually to promote. One other thing I'll say is, um, when we, you look back at how to keep a job, there's two ways that you keep a job. You change something or you work for a customer. If you're not in a job that's changing and you're not in a job where you work for a customer, you're either going to be outsourced or technology is going to overtake your job. And that's what we've learned in our world. You have to, because computers don't change things. They need information and knowledge to do that. People change things and then they get a computer to change it. That's why we have this schism between really rich and really poor, our average, because the people who are creating the change, people who are creating those mechanisms that are changing industries are making a tremendous amount of money. And the people who used to work at those jobs now see computers do their jobs from these people who've created it. Um, it's really very much a changing world. And remember the word I talked about, control. You've got to have some control over your future in order to profit from it. And those of us who have kids, I'm sure we're worried, what kind of job are they going to have? These are the things that they have to consider. Dean, what's your response to people who, you know, belong to organizations where the uh, management change, uh, changes a lot? In other words, not, not, not the management itself, but the management has an ethos of we've got to change, innovate, and, and change happens so rapidly that people can't get used to the change. Uh, so there's, is there a balance that has to be struck between uh, change for change's sake and just uh, change that's meaningful for organizations? Well, great question. It depends. It depends on the industry, I think. Uh, change for the sake of change isn't necessarily bad. Uh, there are some industries in technology that if you're not radically um, transforming your product within a year, then somebody else will and you're going to be out of business. There's some other industries that change is not necessarily at the forefront of what they do. But if you're an online education, if you're an online teacher, in my opinion, you better be looking at any and every latest technology and figuring out how to master that technology. There's more work today in being an online teacher than being a teacher 10 and 20 years ago. The ability to teach the same course with the same material is gone. It may work for a year, year and a half, but you're gonna to have to come up with a new video. You're gonna to have to come up with a different presentation of the same information or different information in order to be successful. Otherwise, they or we are gonna be looking for different teachers. It is more work today. Whether there's a balance, I tend to be on the side that the world's gonna change much more rapidly and if I want to have some control over my future, I'm going to have to embrace whatever change that is. And I'm not going to be the person that's going to wait for a school to change. I'm going to go out and say, I found this new website. They have this new software. It'll work great in our 
class, it'll give us a strategic advantage over other schools, I think we should be moving in this direction. There's a saying, um, and I hesitate sometimes saying it because it gets misunderstood, but here it goes. Fail fast, fix it, and move on. And what it really means is not that you make a bunch of failures, that's not the intent. The intent is you have to do something, you have to fix it as best you can, but you always got to be figuring that how are you going to move on. You've got to con continue to move on. So I have this saying in my office, I'm in my office now, you can see it says next. It's just this word. I and so I also look at what's next, what's next. You always got to look at what's next because people who get bogged down in creating something perfectly, by the time you create something perfectly and implement it, your competitor, whether it's your fellow teacher or fellow school, is already off to the next one. So you perfected a technology that's dated. So there is a balance, it depends on the industry that you're in, but you have to have a mindset that what you're doing today is not necessarily what you're gonna do tomorrow, and you're gonna be able to, you have to be able to adapt to what is coming tomorrow. And more often than that, go a step further. Be the catalyst that changes something for tomorrow. Um, it, it's just, it, it's just, I was, I was going to make this analogy. I'll go ahead and do it. I started teaching 20 years ago. At the time, I had two master's degrees, um, which many people didn't. Um, the standard, certainly when I was teaching on ground, was just to really have a master's degree because I had a full-time job. And I knew quite quickly um, that the world was changing in that you needed to get a terminal degree. So many years ago, 15, I don't know how long, I went back to get a terminal degree. And I remember my friends saying, oh my gosh, why are you doing this? So much work, you don't need that. Look at all the classes you're teaching now. And you know, you even have a full-time job. Why are you gonna do that? I says, I think the industry's moving this way. Lo and behold, many years later, I talked to some of those friends who are struggling to find classes, struggling to get a college to hire them. And it's because they didn't realize that the world was changing. And even when they were given the information that the world is changing, they didn't do anything to adapt to it. And now they have little control over their future because they don't have the background, they don't have the tools to be successful in today's world. And that's just a little example about how the world is changing. And if you don't recognize it, embrace it, and adapt to it, you're just really not going to have the security and stability in the future that, that you need. I guarantee all of us here, and I know Tony Contento's here and others, you know, we're, start, we're thinking about what's coming next. We're trying to figure out how to position ourselves and our schools on what's next so that we can profit from it. Because if you're not a leader in your industry, whether as an employee or as, a, as an employer, then you really are at the will of other people. You are now a passenger in a train going to a destination that you have no control of going. And that's not a place that I want to be. That's not a place that I think our college should be. We really have to be at the forefront. And we are. I mean, you look at Dr. Becky and, and, and John, and my goodness, the change that they promote and embrace is amazing. Great question. Thanks, Rob. Okay, great, Dean. Well, thanks. I think that's. I think we're probably ready to to wrap it up here. Do you have any final thoughts? I don't. I just thank everybody for attending. All right, thanks, Dean. We very much appreciate everybody's uh, commenting in the chat box about how it was a very inspirational uh, presentation from you. So thanks so much for this. And uh, everybody, two weeks from now, we'll have our uh, next uh, uh, presentation, twelve noon Mountain Time. Thanks so much, everybody. Absolutely. Take care, everybody. Enjoy the day. <laughs>